What's going on guys? This is just an update on how the babies are doing. Uh, Rex begonias, Rhizomitus begonias in either watercolor or acrylic. It's been a it's been a hot minute, so I figured let's just take a look and see how things are doing. Um, one thing I could start with is our watercolor Rex begonia leaf. Let me lift this up so you can see. Doing very well in plain old watercolor. You can see the roots are nice and long, going all the way down. Um, it looks like looks like just one crown at this point, but the leaves are getting nice and big. And they, uh, since they're right under the light, they're getting their colors. So steady progress. You can see there are. Let me go in here so you can see. There's some new leaves there, two new leaves coming up, which is nice. Usually they just have one leaf at a time, but this one's got two, so I'm not going to complain. All righty, over here is the propagation. This is a water propagation um, that we put into perlite. And as you can see, we've got some new leaves coming up, this one in particular. Um, again, well, not again, but... For this video, it's the first time I'm mentioning it, but perlite is not my favorite um, medium to grow Rex begonias in. It's possible, obviously. You can see there it's thriving, but not my favorite. Um, and I, I'll, I'll give you an example of a difference between that. This one was water propagated and then put into perlite. This was water propagated and put into acrylic. So you can see there is a big difference just the leaves look healthier they are firmer there isn't even the mother leaf look at this mother leaf stellar condition I could cut this off and repropagate it if I wanted to this one here you can see the mother leaf not so good you know got the burnt edges it doesn't it's not as, as firm and strong even one of the newer leaves not the best so um, just a good example of the difference between uh, mediums and here over here is another one this is another of the same uh, type of Rex that was water propagated and then put into the acrylic and the same situation it's doing very well uh, no issues at all mother leaf is in great condition there's mama right back there so uh, yeah I I'm telling you that's <laughs> acrylic is my favorite medium it, it is for rex begonias just is just is here is my pink shades this is a um a rex that is in the jurassic series the leaves have have gotten really big compared to the last video so you can see they're doing very well very healthy um i do see that these older leaves this is the mother leaf here i believe and there's another leaf let me go under there you can see they're not doing so well and that's because when I watered I got these wet too many times if you get them wet once they'll dry up everything will be fine but I kept getting them wet because I use um, one of those spray bottles that is used in um, tattoo parlors to spray off and disinfect your skin so I use that and instead of putting the nozzle into the acrylic I kind of just spray it all over the top not a good idea because that's what could happen to your leaves but obviously the other leaves that stayed dry are very healthy and they're getting nice and big, getting beautiful color. <laughs> I love this color. This is so cool. It's like iridescent. And yeah, so that one's doing good. Now this, this is a very interesting begonia. Okay, hear me out. This begonia is pretty old. I've had this. This was transferred almost a year ago, I believe, into the acrylic. Okay. Now, what ended up happening, and I'm not sure exactly why, um, I can only assume it could have been temperature, humidity, or I had forgotten about it, I didn't water it enough. This plant went dormant. And by dormant, I don't mean it lost its leaves and was like a bare stem, nothing like that. A lot of times, Rex begonias will go into a dormancy when conditions aren't exactly the way they want them. And, you know, every plant can be a little different, too. So this plant went dormant and it stayed. You can see how long that stem is, that rhizome. Now, those rhizomes 
don't grow that fast. The leaves sprout relatively quickly, but they're pretty much close to each other as they sprout. So for a rhizome to get this long, you know that this is an old plant, an old cutting. So um, it pretty much went dormant for, I'd say a couple of months. There wasn't any growth. It was alive, it was thriving, it was green, it didn't have any color either. See, this is the new reddish color. This is Red Kiss, I believe. This is the new color coming in now that it's in active growth and it's under the light. And um, But it went dormant for a couple of months. And I just kind of let it be. I didn't um, stress about it. As long as it, it didn't look like it was dying or declining, it just kind of froze in time. And that's fine. Um, I had other things I was doing with the other propagation, so I said, let me just leave it. I'll keep watering it. I'll give it some feed, and I will put it closer to the light. So when I put it closer to the light, and it got more humid and warm in here, we are, let's see, 75 degrees Fahrenheit and 69% humidity in here. So anything above 50% humidity, these plants love. So I'm trying to keep it humid. Um, I don't know if I'll be able to do that all year long. But anyway, getting back to my story. So, so this plant was dormant, okay? It is back in active growth, and, um, and I'm starting to, to feed it again. I stopped fertilizing it when it wasn't growing because I didn't want to burn those roots if they're not uh, uptaking that, the feed. So now we're back in active growth, and, uh, and the color's coming back. So yeah, you, you may notice if you have Rex begonias and you have them in the house, if your plants stop growing, they could lose some leaves. I'm not going to say that they're not going to lose any leaves. I don't think that they would lose all their leaves. If they lose all their leaves, there could be another problem, like a root rot situation or something along those lines. But if they just kind of freeze in time, there could be uh, a dormancy happening. And there are ways that you could break that dormancy. We can get into that another time. But anyway, I just wanted to show you this guy because we're back to growing. And I'm going to try to keep this one growing. Um, I remember a few months ago I did a video and I had this plant in the video. And I couldn't wait for the leaves to grow, to, for the stem to grow tall enough so that the leaves are growing outside of this vessel. And they finally are. So there you have it. But yeah, dormancy, sometimes it happens. And to me, that's a sign that something's not right. This plant is reacting to something. Okay, here we have, um, this was a leaf propagation in water originally into acrylic. Root system is beautiful, it's gorgeous. Um, I just watered this earlier today. This is another Jurassic, I believe it's Silver Point. And um, doing great. It's continuing to throw out new leaves. And I just have to make sure that I keep the acrylic hydrated because this one went dry for a little while and it started to freeze and I'm like oh it's going dormant something's not right it turns out I uh, was not watering it enough didn't die just kind of held out and said all right I need some help here <laughs> so uh, so we're back to to active growth and there's a new leaf that you can see is really good these guys here are the iron cross masoniana begonia masoniana these are just leaf cuttings I took let me take one out at a time We've got some root development, you can see. I don't see any signs of um, plantlets growing or any new shoots, but we have roots, so that's the first thing. And I've mentioned this before, and I could be completely off with this as far as other people's opinions, but for me, in this growth space, in my environment, I've noticed that non-Rex rhizomatous begonias, because Rex are rhizomatous also, but Rex blood is uh, derived from certain crosses and species that um, other rhizomatous begonias don't have. Um, but I've noticed that um, non-Rex rhizomatous take longer to propagate for me. They always have. Um, even Rex begonias that have less of the actual Rex bloodline, I I I'm assuming, um, they seem to take longer. Anyway, that's just my two cents. Okay. Down here we have this other, and I don't know, this was a no ID. Um, this one also seems to have stalled a little bit. Hold on, I'm sorry about that, guys. You can see it's growing outside of this bowl, but I'm thinking I'm going to remove it from the bowl. I think the bowl has something to do with this. Um, 
I'm not sure exactly why, but some of my propagations that are in other vessels are growing quicker. Um, even that one back there, that one um, in, the, in the red yarn, you can see that one was planted after this one was, and it's pretty much at the same stage. And that's in a smaller vessel. So I'm thinking of changing this and maybe putting it into something different. I haven't decided yet, but um, I've increased the feed and put it directly into the light. And hopefully this will bounce back and not go and continue into a dormancy because I don't want that. I want them to keep growing. All right. This here is Hugh McLaughlin. This one was propagated in water and then placed into the acrylic. And as you can see... The plant is doing fantastic. Lots and lots and lots of babies. I'm gonna um, increase the feed a little bit to get some more growth. Um, even though it's doing great, I just wanna give it a little boost to something. Something, something, some um, high nitrogen hydroponic fertilizer. All right, and this over here is a, another Jurassic. This is dragon fruit. This was a leaf cutting I put from water propagation into the acrylic and as you can see it's doing oh this is light i gotta water this um it's doing extremely well but it's very very dehydrated i can see the mother leaf is showing signs of dehydration um yeah i gotta water this one so this one i gotta remember to water but it's doing great uh this here oh, oh no i lost my props i gotta put them back in i believe this is cumbia this was something I got in the mail and it was in horrible shape and it was pretty much dying. I salvaged one leaf and then I had some um, stems, some rhizomes that pretty much lost all their leaves, but I cut them, I cleaned them, I disinfected them, I stuck them in some moss, um, give that a little test and sure enough, of course I, I did a spag and bag and I covered this, I put this in a bag and sure enough they sprouted. So I have two or three plants of this beautiful variety look at that isn't that beautiful really cool love it all right let me put these back in these came out sorry kids didn't mean to uproot you all right what else we got well we got some silver limbos these are leaf props in water these are getting ready i can put these into a medium probably going to be acrylic because it's my favorite and it works the best um you can see the mother leaf is in great shape. The babies are in great shape because they're getting enough light here. Just a very, very good environment right here. This uh, little area is really good for propagation. Oh, here. Now this, this is also the cumbia, just like these. This was the stem of the only leaf that survived. I cut the leaf off, the top of the leaf, because it had a propagation growing out of the leaf surface. So the stem that was under the water had a bunch, had a lot of roots, but a bunch of little plants starting to form on that the petiole, on the leaf stem. So I took the stem and I just laid it across. You can probably see it in there. It's going like that way. It's curved. I laid it across, covered it with some of the acrylic. Sure enough. And I covered it as well with a cup. And look at all these plants that are growing. And this is in one of my self-watering with the acrylic as the medium. You see that the, uh, the yarn chain goes down into the media, into the uh, reservoir. And that's the only medium that's in here. The plants love it. Love it, love it, love it. So that's that one. Uh, here is something I recently transplanted into a self-watering with acrylic. This is another um, Jurassic Rex. This is Heartbeat. This one was growing plantlets on the top surface of the leaf. So I just took the petiole, which wasn't too long, had roots in it, and I dug it into the acrylic. And as you can see, it is not showing any signs of wilting. The little babies are growing nicely. And there is the reservoir with the acrylic going into it. I'm telling you, this is so easy to maintain. I wait until the water gets down to maybe an inch or even a centimeter, and then I rewater it. It doesn't need anything. It doesn't need anything. As long as it gets its light, it'll take maybe a month before you have to water it again. So easy for Rex begonias. And you never hear anybody say Rex begonias and easy in the same sentence, except for me. 
So, uh, so that's that. Let's see what else we got. What else? What else? What else? This was a pink shades, just like this one here. I propagated it in moss. Doing well. I don't have a problem with sphagnum moss. They do um, pretty good. I, I don't have anything to complain about. And I also would put um, a lot of propagations in moss, or start them in moss at least, if I'm planning on selling or handing out um, the plants to someone else. This way it's easy to take them out, plant them in, in soil if that's what somebody desires. I wouldn't do it, but... <laughs> You know, knock yourself out. But anyway, when it's in moss, it's easier to kind of shake off the excess moss and put it into a pot of soil, if that's what you're doing. Um, oh, back here we have some other water culture, water propagations. These guys both were, um, oh, they're two different, uh, I believe this is salsa, Begonia Rex salsa, and this one is, I can't remember the name of it. I can't remember the name of it. Maybe Roomba? Might be Roomba. Uh, these both grew the plants on the leaf surface. So I said, you know what? I'll keep them in water culture. And the roots are doing just fine. There's even a little baby growing from the base of that one on the right. There's two of them, it looks like. But the actual baby plants are doing great. They're doing just fine in water culture with a tiny drop of hydroponic fertilizer. And I could keep them in here for a very, 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 very long time. Um, I would only move them, I've only moved my plants out of water culture when I get bored of it, and let's say I don't want to have to keep checking the water or swapping out the water every week, and then I would do something like this, where you have the reservoir and, and it's just much easier to manage. Okay, so that's that one. This is a rhizomatous begonia, Bos I can't remember the Bos Willii, something like that. Anyway, this is a, a rhizomatous begonia, I just stuck the leaf into the yarn and we've got a baby growing there. We've got some new leaves there. This one took a while, not a Rex, maybe that's why, but, um, or at least not a, a strong bloodline of Rex. But yeah, it did propagate. And you can see the mother leaf has been struggling for a while to spit these babies out. She's not, she's not in the best shape, but they're thriving, they're doing okay. Um, back here, is one of my escargots. This is the S, let me take it out so you can see it. This was the escargot that has featured in, has been featured in a lot of these videos. It went dormant with like three leaves and was not doing anything. So I said, all right, take your time. If you need to rest, do your thing. Didn't lose any leaves. It just stayed with two leaves and then it, it popped out a third leaf and just kind of paused. And I said, all right, I'm gonna miss you um, once a day. They don't recommend doing that for Rex begonias because they can get the uh, powdery mildew on the leaves. I have never had powdery mildew yet. Knock on something wooden, please, somewhere. And um, and so I, I miss them to keep the humidity up, and they dry up re relatively quickly. But now it's out of dormancy. It's got a new leaf, and I don't think I see any others in there. But it's doing it's doing fine. Now, in comparison to this one, which this one is months old, okay, you can tell it's, it's gone into a dormancy because it has not grown much. I have another, which is right over here. This was a leaf of an escargot that I put into, you can see the mother leaf at the bottom, I put into the acrylic, and it grew that quickly. And this has been like maybe two months. So you can see that one there versus this one here, same plant, same bloodline. It's just this one took a lot longer. It went through a dormancy. And again, each individual plant, it, it's an individual. It's like a person, you know. They, they have their own needs. It, they have general needs for the species and for the cultivar, but I found that each plant could have its own specific needs that could throw it into a dormancy as far as Rex begonias are concerned. This one has not gone into a dormancy. It's directly under the light. I keep the moisture level high in the acrylic, and it's doing great. So, um, you know, I think the moisture has a lot to do with it, but... I'm still kind of figuring all of that out because there's, uh, you know, there are a lot of uh, variables. Here's another escargot in there. That's a leaf, a piece of a leaf that I stuck into some moss, some sphagnum moss. It's got a leaf, a baby popping up there, doing just fine. Um, over here is another silver limbo. I put this, was a water prop that I put into some sphagnum moss, planning on selling this one off when it gets bigger. 
So you can see it's doing just fine. Um, I definitely recommend Moss if, you if you're not into the experimentation type thing, like using the acrylic, even though <laughs> you can see that it does great things. Um, here's another acrylic in a self-watering back there. I love this one. This one's doing great. Um, you can see that there's the reservoir. Um, if you're not into the acrylic situation, I would definitely recommend, just from my own experience, the moss being the next best thing. I don't like soil at all. I've tried it. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, but I have more failures in soil than anything else. Even, even though like this one is not doing great in perlite, it's still doing better than it would have done in soil for me. Because I, I tried for years in soil and I'm just like, why can't I get these plants to grow and thrive just to exist? They won't exist in soil. Um, all right, so here is another plant. This one was put into a vial with some moss. Not doing so great. I'm going to have to check this out and find out why. I'm wondering if, I mean, it looks like the medium is damp enough, but maybe it needs some more water. I don't know. Yeah, moss. Yeah, it looks like it's, it's it, when, it, when those leaves have that dull look to them, it means that they're slightly dehydrated. So I got to water this one. Um... Back there is another silver limbo, leaf cutting in acrylic, and a self-watering, just doing its thing. Now, you see the mother leaf, how it's like not doing well at all, it's kind of crispy, drying up? That's because, look how far away it is from the light. Light is here, all the way over there is that plant. It's kind of in the shade, in the dark. Compared to this one in water culture that's right under the light, the mother leaf is in stellar condition. So, I can't stress it enough. Light is so important with Rex begonias. They always say that they're they're not full sun plants, that they're shade plants. Okay, outside, they're shade plants. Indoors, the brightest light you can give them without direct sun hitting the leaves is what they need. All right, another of one of the same. This is, look at how beautiful those colors are. This is a Rex that is um, the Jurassic series, Dragon Fruit. And this one propagated in sphagnum moss. And you can see the little plant is doing just fine. This is directly under some lights on the uh, to the left of me because I have another bin with um, LED lights. Mother leaf doing well. Baby's doing great. This one will probably be sold off because it's in the moss. As you can tell, I tend to keep the acrylics to myself because I don't want to have to transplant them, pull them out. And I've done that, and it's been fine. Uh, this is a rhizomatous, another rhizomatous, non-rex. Um, kind of went dormant on me. Uh, actually, it's the same as this, believe it or not. These are what the mature leaves, kind of the coloring looks like. This is a new leaf, but it's kind of sluggish. It's going dormant. So I'm, I'm really going to be focusing more on the Rex um, type begonias because, first of all, they're more beautiful as far as I'm concerned. They have more color variations and options, but they're also... I, I've been able to crack the code for Rex. Um, for Rhizomatous, I would keep them in soil and let them completely dry between waterings, but they're not as much fun, and I hate to say it, but they're a little bit boring. Unless you get like one of those really big leafed, uh, I've had a video, um, I posted a video about the large leafed Rhizomatous begonias. Those I think are really cool. Um, but something like this, it's nice, it's pretty, but to me, it's not the same as this, or this, or even this. You know what I mean? And even this. This is an upright Rex rhizomatous. So it grows kind of like a cane, except it's considered a rhizomatous with an upright jointed stem. So this can also be propagated by leaves. This is a Connie Boswell. It's beautiful. I love these leaves. Really cool. Oh, and I, I can't pass by and not mention the Firewoman, Harmony's Firewoman. She spit out a new leaf right here doing well. This one was transplanted into uh, perlite. We've even got some new growth over here. Not doing as well as I think it would have if it wasn't in perlite. If it was in like, let's say the acrylic, probably would be spitting out another leaf now at this point, but that's fine. Again, everything I do is like experimentation to find what works best. And this is how I learn. <clears throat> let's see what else I can show you. Here is another beautiful Rex. This one has been another um, propagation that was put into acrylic and it went dormant, just like this one here. This went dormant. 
And so what I did was I started to water it more, give it a little bit extra feed, but really just a couple drops in the water. And I put it right under the light and you can see the colors started popping and new leaves started growing like crazy. So combination of humidity, moisture obviously, and light, 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 light will keep these plants from going dormant, okay? And only because this one was down back here for the longest time, okay? And there's the light up here. Look at how far away that is, all the way over there. So I moved it to this bin, which is a mess. I don't like showing this because this is like the, the workstation. <laughs> and, uh, and it started doing much better. Sometimes if your plant goes dormant, maybe move it to a different location. You know, if you have it in a bright window and it's going dormant, maybe move it to a different window. If you're in a north-facing window, bring it to an east or west-facing window. Even a south-facing window if the sun doesn't actually hit the leaves. Um, that's what I would do because that's what I, I started to learn. When something just kind of stalls, all right, well, what do I got to do? Let me move you around and find where you want to be. Here is another rhizomatous. Really pretty. Really interesting leaves. This one stalled for a while. This went dormant. And um, again, I put it right under the lights and started picking up again. So we've got new growth, some new leaves, and um, really pretty leaves. Um, I also have in this other area here, one or I have two of these, but I'll just show you one of them. This is the humiglophilin that was propagated directly in the sphagnum moss from a leaf wedge, just a piece of a leaf. And I moved it under the lights and you could see it's starting to get that reddish color on the leaf surface on this new leaf right there. And, uh, and that one right there. So again, light, 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 so important. Um, let's see if there's anything else I can show you guys. Um, let's see, I think that might be it for this update. There's just so many things I could show you, but I only wanna show you the things that are really kind of something you've seen before so you kind of know where it's come from and how far it's come. Um, but again, these have been my saviors, these self-watering um, acrylic medium planters that I made. They really, <laughs> they make life so easy. Um, oh wait, there is one thing I wanna show you guys. Let me see if I can get a hold of it. Um, hold on, sorry. I probably can't, I'll do another video for that. Um, but yeah, if you have any questions on any of these plants, um, on my unconventional methods of growing them, here's another down here. I believe this is, um, silver point that was propagated from a piece of a leaf in acrylic yarn. Uh, if you have any questions on anything that you see on my unconventional methods, just reach out. Um, if you're struggling with your begonias and you want to keep them in soil or you have them in a different medium, um, definitely reach out and we could probably troubleshoot together because I have a bunch that are in soil. Um, I don't propagate into soil, but if I buy them in soil, a lot of times I'll keep them in a small pot with soil. I won't upsize the pot. I won't repot them. That is just a, a recipe for disaster that's asking for problems and root rot. So I kind of leave them and they're fine with that. They could stay in the same pot for many, many years. So yeah, if you have any questions or issues with your own recs, feel free to reach out because for the last year or so, maybe even a year and a half, maybe two years, <clears throat> this is the plant genus that I've really been focusing on because I needed to conquer the husbandry and I wanted to have more of them. And there was a period of time where I only had like three or four of them that I kept having to recycle because they wouldn't survive. And now <laughs> you can see, <laughs> you see, this is just the propagation bench, but you can see how many I have now and how well they're doing. So any questions at all, just reach out. Don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe. Hit that bell if you want to be notified, and I will see you in the next video.